What do we paint? What am I painting? What do paintings do today and what will they become? What makes a great painting? If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? These questions tumble around in my mind when I sit down in front of a blank piece of canvas or paper. As my attention drifts from my mind to my hand, these thoughts also fade into nothing. I think it was Philip Guston who once said that there are a lot of people in the studio with you. Teachers, friends, painters from history, critics, and one by one they walk out. And if you are really painting, you walk out. I love that quote. It strikes a chord in me that makes my brush hairs stand on end. It suggests that I'm not even there when I'm making up. It's true. Everything that makes up me is aligned in the direction of creating that from my mind's eyes perspective, there's nothing there but the painting. It's like I'm watching it paint itself. I often contemplate where I sit in the vast history of artistic styles, movements and pioneers of painting. Obviously I'm a speck of insignificant dust that lives on a hair of the modern art mouse that lives in the pocket of the giant that is art history, but it's a humbling thought experiment. Overwhelming, of course. But inspiring, too. I've been reflecting on my subconscious idea of what I think painting should be. Clearly there's a Western bias to my preconceptions, as well as a thick helping of humour on top. But Little Movements is more than an observation of the giants I think I stand on. At a deeper level of the exhibition cake, beneath this attention-grabbing frosting of recognisable Mr. Men motifs, is the dense, silent conversation between the movements. I'm anthropomorphizing them as if they have autonomy because in reality they do. They speak and converse with one another over time, sometimes whispering, sometimes shouting, but always talking. If you look close enough you just might hear, if you listen you just might see. I guess that's why they're called art movements. They're alive and in motion with us, living, breathing, speaking matter that influences and mirrors us, all whilst giving birth to new ideas. They reflect our collective conscience. I think that's why we hold certain paintings above the rest. Perhaps they step that little bit closer to something fundamental about our shared truth, daring to answer the big questions like, what's the meaning of it all? A bit existential, I know, for painting splattered across a canvas. But I'm not sure the medium really matters too. Beside arrogantly giving myself the opportunity to flex new technical muscles, the exploration of differing stars in this show has taught me something important. My undivided presence seems to precede my technical process. That's not to say technique isn't important. It can certainly refine your artistic voice. But being in the moment speaks volumes to this collective frequency of truth. When you are truly present with the painting, you walk out and leave it harmonizing with everything before and after it. These honest paintings, whatever I mean by that, can both reflect on the past and present while simultaneously revealing something of our shared future. I think they speak to you whether you're paying attention or not. It's like the tree falling in the forest analogy, but it doesn't matter if you can't hear it because it's always falling. The rhythm of it will forever echo out just as much as it echoes back into the forest. You'll dance to the beat regardless of whether you hear it because you'll feel the vibrations in your feet. It will move you in ways you don't understand. I'm not sure I want to understand. Guess I'll just keep dancing.